So homies, I got something special for you guys today. I wanted to show you guys through data, math, and a bunch of research what the best possible artifact domain to farm is in Genshin Impact in terms of how worth it it is for you to spend your resin on it. This isn't the best artifact sets in the game. I mean, it is, trust me, it is. But sometimes one artifact set is good, one artifact set is bad, and that makes it a little less resin efficient. So guys, I'm here to help you figure out where to spend your resin to get the best artifacts. Let's get into it. So what I did for this experiment, I took every single character in the entire game, four star and five star, and I wrote down what their best in slot artifacts are. If there's more than one, let's take, you know, Blizzard Strayer and Wanderer's Troop on you, for example, Melt and Freeze, okay? So those are both best in slot. Their second best in slot, and then any two piece set that, it, that rivals that second best slot or even sometimes the first piece slot, okay? I took all of those. Best in slot, three points. Second best in slot, two points. And if they use a two piece set, that artifact set is getting one point. So I take every single artifact set's points they've accumulated and then you combine it with the do with the other set that they uh, share the domain with, and then they get a point value. So that is how we are doing the math today. What is the most resin efficient set based on how many characters they are going to work on and buff on your account and get you? Real quick, some things to note, guys. If I say this artifact domain is pretty bad, but it's the best possible artifact set for your favorite character, your main, a character you wanna build, go out and farm it. That's not what this is about. This is just to show you guys where the math lies as what is the most resin efficient. You guys gotta farm the best set for your favorite characters, so don't let me change you, do that. And then second, for two piece elemental mastery and attack sets, which there are a lot of, I wanna let you guys know, I was very strict in assigning them to characters because technically every character in the entire game can run a two piece, two piece to decent effect. It's just if it was actually strong enough to rival their second best in slot or even their first best in slot, making it like very much worth it for them instead of just throwing, you know, the best two piece for every single character because that would make those unfairly weighed. So I was very strict in that. I wanna hear it from chat. What do you guys think is the worst artifact domain to farm in the game. Maidens for sure. Think about the other artifact set in that domain and then come back to your boy. Crimson, Thundering Fury, Archaic Petra. That's the one. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. I've never farmed before. Oh, it's over here. <laughs> so you may have guessed it. The Archaic Petra retracing bolide domain comes in last place with only 14 point archaic is pretty much only the best in soft for yun jin sometimes and sometimes ning wong and then i would even argue bolide is it can be good sometimes interesting i don't know this is not an artifact domain that i recommend farming at all if you really need these artifact sets just use the strong box but i don't recommend farming either. the next worst artifact domain based on my research to farm is actually a popular one. Did I click on the wrong one? No, it was the right one. <laughs> the Thundering Fury and Thunder Soothers domain. This may come as a surprise just because of how good Thundering Fury is right now because of Dendro. It's pretty much the best in slot on Kaching, Fischl, Sino, Lisa. You can even use Thunder Soothers as a very good four piece on things like Yaimiko, Kaching, etc. on full electro teams. But it is a very low per capita of all the characters in the game best in slot. It comes in with only 26 points on this scale. I do recommend, once again, artifact strong boxing if you've got a ka-ching. And I would avoid some thunder soothers, excuse me, as much as you can. Coming in at 27 points, only one point above the thunder domain, thundering fury and thunder soothers is the ocean you clam at 27 points. Now, we know this is a great set for characters. The truth is just not that many characters, you know? There's a couple that want Husk. Talking about Arataki Ito, maybe even talking about something like Albedo. But then you go to Ocean Clam and it's like Kokomi, it can be her best in soft, but there's also great artifact sets for her in this game. Chi Chi can use this as well. And then some other characters, like it's not the most amazing on Barbara, for example. It's just like a very low amount of characters have this as their best in slot. And the two pieces aren't very valuable is the thing. You know, two piece healing bonus and two piece defense doesn't really go fantastically across the board. So that's why they 
they are in 11th place out of all the domains. So next up, once again, ow, I almost bit my tongue. <laughs> Blizzard Strayer and Heart of Depth is next. Great artifact sets, but pretty much Heart of Depth is pretty much only the best in slot for like Child and then sometimes Ayato, and that's kind of it. And then for Blizzard Strayer, I would say it's the best in slot for Ayaka, Rosaria on some freeze comps, I would say Ganyu. So once again, very character specified, best in slot on a good amount of characters, but doesn't really fit into that many good two piece, two pieces for characters and just not that many characters in the game use this as their best in slot. Once again, for every artifact set in this video, guys, if you guys use these characters, these are your mains, farm these domains, or at least use the strong box to get them these sets. This is not saying these sets are bad. They're just saying that, that sometimes they're not the most resin efficient for everybody. Took me a bit to find it, but here we are in Sumeru. The Desert Pavilion Chronicle and the Flower of Paradise Lost is coming in next at only ninth place with only 32 points. We're starting to see a trend here. I would say Pavilion is pretty much only the best in slot for Wanderer. And then it can be okay on Shao. It can be okay on Heijo, but it's not really their best set. And then for Flower of Paradise Lost, you would think that this set was like really here to buff up bloom stuff but i would argue it's pretty much only best to saw on like kokomi for bloom teams and then weirdly enough i would say toma on certain virgin teams but what really brings this domain up because you would be surprised that sounds horrible flower of paradise lost holds the ever coveted two-piece elemental mastery bonus which is extremely extremely valuable so many characters in the game right now are using two piece ele elemental mastery where they can because it's just cheap it's easy and i think just with how strong reactions are on like hyper bloom bloom etc it's made building your characters really simple and really easy so honestly the elemental mastery bonus is what propels this artifact domain up to ninth place and 32 points which isn't great but i would only really farm this if you're a wanderer main or if you just really, really want your uh, Kokomi to be cracked. So coming into eighth place is the Crimson Witch of Flames and Lava Walkers domain. Now, as we know, this is the best in slot artifact set for a ton of Pyro DPS characters, but how many Pyro DPS characters are there in the game? You know what I mean? Like five, six. So it's the best in slot there. But then the unfortunate truth is Lava Walkers is a very weak set it's pretty much only the best in slot for a few pretty niche things i would say like there's these weird ningguang builds where it's the best set and then there's like melt rosaria but uh mono pyro Klee, and yoimiya it fits but it's not their best in slot and it's not something you should farm for by any means and then the two-piece sets are also pretty weak two-piece pyro is great but every character that uses two-piece pyro has a four-piece that's going to be way better or even another four-piece that's better than including two-piece pyro. So Crimson Witch is actually all the way down here at eighth place, but the strong box exists. Get farming, gamers. So next up is an artifact domain I think a lot of people were thinking would be way, way lower on this list. But I pretty much think that this just shows how unbelievably strong the Viridescent Venerer set is because it is paired with a very arguably terrible and mediocre set of Made and Beloved, but it's still placing this high. Viridescent Venerer and Made and Beloved coming in at 35 points in seventh place. With it being this high on the list, I wouldn't really recommend farming this domain because Viridescent Venerer is available in the strong box. But I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this is the most horrendous artifact domain to farm just because Viridescent Venerer is, it's that, good it's that important every single account needs one to two amazing various inventor sets for their animal support i would probably just strong box it but if you want to farm it and just turn all those maiden beloved pieces into another set it's not the worst thing ever various inventor is the best in slot for every animal support kazuha sayu sucrose you name it heijo on lots of teams literally every single animal support in the game gene it's their best in slot. And then Maiden is pretty much only the best in slot on Barbara. And even then, I don't know, I'd probably rather use Clam. So ignore Maiden, throw it away, trash it. But Viridus Inventor is that good. And it does make your resin just a little bit more efficient in this domain. The next artifact domain is only slightly better. And that is the Tenacity of Millilith and the Pale Flame domain. But this is coming in at sixth. Think about that. 
pretty much the thing carrying this set is very obviously tenacity of the milla this is the best in slot artifact set for a ton of different characters and it's also just a very versatile set that works on a lot of different characters as well it's the best in slot for characters like kokumi it's the best in slot for characters like zongli is extremely good on kuki shinobu for example for you know just like overall working on multiple different kinds of teams maybe it's not the best for her hyper bloom dendro based comps this is a really good artifact set and also its two-piece set is very important for certain characters such as nilu Nilu needs to run the two-piece tenacity set. She needs that HP until she gets a better artifact set for herself. And then guys, Pale Flame, as much as it isn't the most versatile artifact set, it is the best in slot for Eula. And then the two-piece can be good for lots of physical characters like Razor. And then it actually is the best in slot, I would say, for physical Zinyan. It kind of like brings it up, but I would say the thing carrying this domain is tenacity and Milo. I would farm this domain especially if you do have some physical characters that might benefit from Pale Flame a little bit. Even then, you might still need to hop in there uh, and farm some Tenacity and Lilith because it is a very, very good and versatile support set. I would say support artifact sets are just as important as the DPS ones. Now with a jump up of 11 points, and I have to say, guys, I'm not a statistician, so my data can be a little, it's not perfect, okay? But next up is a very weird artifact domain. It is the Vermilion Hereafter and the Echoes of an Offering domain. Now, it's very high up on this list, but it's only due to the weight of both artifact sets, Vermilion and Echoes, both being two-piece attack sets. In this experiment, you know, it did come up high in the data, but I still only recommend farming this set if you are a Shao main for Vermilion Hereafter, an Ayato main, or maybe even Wanderer, because Wanderer does use Echoes of an Offering really good. I wouldn't farm this unless you have those characters, but two-piece attack is that good. Hopefully you're gonna get enough two-piece attacks through Gladiators and some other artifacts. Else. So coming into the top four, this is a curveball, all right? And I'm just gonna click on Cry Red is fine. It is both Gladiators and Wanderer's Troop. Now, technically, this isn't an artifact domain, but you get these artifacts by killing every world boss pretty much in the game and then your weekly bosses. Now, I don't recommend farming these bosses just for the artifacts. I think that would be very dumb, okay? But just playing Genshin, leveling up your characters, etc., you are going to get a lot of these artifacts. Both of these sets have a very strong two-piece, two-piece of attack and elemental mastery. That is what carries these sets a lot, but they are still the best in slot for a couple characters. I would say Wanderer's Troop is fantastic on Tainari and Melt Gone Yu. And then Four Piece Glad is the best in slot on Ayato if you've got pretty insane stats. And then I also have it as the best in slot two piece for Shen He shared with Noblesse Oblige. You can't exactly spend your resident on it, but it is very resin efficient and these artifact sets are great to have on your account so a little bit of a curveball here in fourth place coming in all the way at third place this is unbelievably shocking to me no bless oblige and blood stained chivalry now big big caveat no bless makes up 67 of the 72 points for this domain. Think about how crazy your resin efficiency has to be with how bad Bloodstained Chivalry is. No Bless Oblige is the best in slot for so many characters in the entire game. Geo Traveler, Bennett, Candace, Chong Yun on certain supports, Freeze, Diona, Dory, Goro, Kaya, Shen He, Yanfei, Yunji, literally, I just named so many characters. Then the two piece noblesse is really, really good because it's elemental burst damage on so many different characters. Everybody knows noblesse is the go to just strong box it forehead. And you guys know I'm saying that a lot, but I'm being honest with you. Like, with how good noblesse is, it's honestly pretty surprising how resin efficient this domain still is. Toss the Bloodstained Chivalry, it's a very poor artifact set nobody uses the four piece you run the two piece on eula or razor if you don't have something better it's pretty much just that um it's a very very bad artifact set but you can strong box it but when you get those no bless pieces they start flying in and the substats are good it makes it all worth it it's up to you whether you want a strong box no bless 
or farm it to get a little bit of a kickstart and get more noblesse in your on your teams but it, it is so good it blew my mind just how many characters want good noblesse oblige pieces so third place noblesse 72 points coming in at second place at 75 points towering over a lot of domains is the gilded dreams deep wood memories domain new to subaru so pretty much both of these sets are extremely extremely strong this isn't like a crazy lopsided domain they're both really good with gilded being a little bit higher for sure gilded is the hero of the domain okay it has a very strong two-piece once again it has the coveted two-piece elemental mastery okay which just helps every damage dealer in the game but then you, you have to think all the characters that use gilded as their best in slot kuki nahida razor for the <laughs> for his damage it's, it's, it's a weird build but okay. rosaria for melt etc it is so good it buffed so many characters dendro has changed the game in how important elemental mastery is buffing all these electro characters and hyper bloom all of that bloom etc gilded dreams is insane and then don't get me wrong about deep wood it is and can be the best in slot for almost every single dendro character in the entire game because every dendro comp needs this set so unlike viridescent venerer where like the animo has to run it anybody on the team can run deep wood so if you're running you know gilded on kooky and you're running viridescent venerer on your animal support you might just need to put the deep wood onto the dps character but it's fine because you're getting the two piece dendro damage bonus and the dendro shred maybe the personal damage will take a hit but it's still necessary on your team and every team needs deep wood memories this is such an insane artifact set to farm look at all the characters below the two pieces are good the four pieces are good insanely good artifact domain this shouldn't come as a surprise to any of you guys who have been playing genshin for a long long time we're here for the birth of inazuma number one at a whopping dude 82 points on this scale is the emblem of severed fate and shimanawa's reminiscence domain let me say right now shimanawa's does hold its own here in weight just because it is a extremely universal two-piece attack set and it can it's arguably you know best in slot for a couple different characters so it, it does hold its own the attack makes it that much worth it but it's obvious that the big carry here is emblem of severed fate being arguably the best in slot artifact set for 12 different characters in the entire game while also being an extremely solid two-piece set when you need it just out of two-piece energy recharge is unbelievably important okay fav weapons are broken if you don't have your burst up you're not doing damage it doesn't matter how much crit rate and crit damage you have if you can't get your burst up you can't click it energy is cracked emblem of server fate is cracked look at all the characters below i'm talking dude raiden shogun beto chongyun it, it, it the list the list goes on and on yaylon shangling you name it all these insane dps characters they're made for this artifact set the two pieces are great the the four pieces are extremely good for emblem all right for shimnalas and uh even with that this is the artifact domain to farm if you don't need shimnalas you've got enough two pieces just throw them in the strong box but every single emblem of Severed fate piece is going to bring value to your account you need a hydro goblin a pyro goblet sometimes an attack goblet for ryan an electro goblet a dendro goblet probably for somebody it, it's it's wild it's such a fantastic artifact set this is the number one artifact set to farm but of course it's character specific the characters you want in the game this is just to help guide you if you feel like your account is just a little bit weak and you're not really sure where to go this is going to be the most resin efficient artifact domain in the game homies that's gonna do it for this guide i really hope this helped you you know find out where you want to spend your resin and what artifact sets are going to universally make the biggest difference to your account so much love thank you for checking out this video drop a like and a comment you know all that stuff helps a lot and subscribe to the channel if you haven't i'm gonna be pumping out so much more Genshin content all throughout forever okay forever big shout outs to the patrons poison tongue boy baked sayu and zik for supporting us on patreon helping us make these videos helping us keep the roof above our head to make content and i'll see you guys next time Peace, everybody.